Hi, I'm Buddy Myers and we're out here at our dairy farm today to talk about alfalfa production. Uh, we've got some things going on here. We've used Konkin products now for the last seven years in our alfalfa production. We're seeing excellent results and uh, we'd like to share some of the things we're doing with you here today. Uh, this is Roger Shad from Beverly High. He's used the AgriVantage program on his alfalfa. This is Jerry Barstow from Zanesville here, the Zanesville area. And Jerry has a farm and he also does foliar feeding for other farmers. So we've got a lot of information we'd like to share with you here today. Talk about this field of alfalfa. Uh, this field was seeded down May the 5th of this year. We took our first cutting off in June. Uh, we took our second cutting around the 1st of August. Uh, I think it's the first week of August. We're standing in the third cutting. We don't have a tape measure with us here today, but I'm guessing it's probably 18, 20 inches tall. So we're going to take three cuttings the year that was seeded. And this is common with the AgriVantage, Conklin AgriVantage program. Roger, what did you see down at your farm the first year? I'd like for you to tell about what you had the year prior to using Conklin, and then what happened the year that you started using the Conklin program. Okay, uh, a couple of years ago I was uh, trying to raise alfalfa and uh, on the conventional program and couldn't quite get the job done. And I was uh, at that time just started to be a Conklin distributor and I come up to visit Bud about something and uh, he said I want to show, me my, show you my alfalfa. So we come over and looked at Bud's alfalfa and I just shook my head. I said, Bud, there ought to be a law against raising alfalfa like that. <laughs> and uh, he said, well you can raise alfalfa like that. And, I said, Bud, I've tried everything in the book so far and haven't had no success. So what we did then, he says, do what I asked you and then we'll see what we can come up with. So the first thing we did was a soil sample. And uh, this was in the, the summer and I had about 70 acres I wanted to sow down. So we took a soil sample on several different fields. And uh, we're in the hill ground, as you can see, we are, are here. And uh, we took the soil sample and then did a prescription according to each field. And the interesting thing of it is, I had one field, the pH was a 5.5. Five. And uh, it called for two ton of lime. So we put two ton of lime on that field that fall. But we was also able, after we uh, took a soil sample and got started into it, we up and uh, sowed the alfalfa on the 28th day of July of that summer. And we had a nice rain after that, the next couple of days, and that stuff popped up. And to make a long story short, uh, we cut a cutting off that alfalfa just about the 18th day of September. And that stuff was about 30 some inches tall and I'm just a little over five foot and a half so it was well up. So we did take a cutting off that first fall and I think that's kind of unusual in alfalfa production planting in the summertime taking a, a crop off of it. The next spring we continued to foliage feed and we'll talk about each product as we get into here but the next year I took five cuttings off that alfalfa. We went in there and foliage fed it in the spring, about the first part of April. Every time we took a cutting off, we had foliage feed it seven, five to ten days later. And uh, we were taking cuttings off of that, depends on the weather and the moisture. The quickest we ever did was 25 days later, we took another cutting. And we took five cuttings off that alfalfa that year. And I was totally, totally impressed. And the alfalfa looked very similar to this right here. It just really responded. And, uh, if a guy is really serious about raising forages and alfalfa particularly, and he wants to increase his yield, I'm talking about at least 30%, you better take a look at what Conklin has to offer. And uh, this is what we're doing today, is showing different farmers how they can, we're sharing with them on how they can do this also. And uh, the dry program, unfortunately, can't hold a stick to what we're, what we're doing. Thank you, Roger. And, uh, you know, it's one thing that, uh, I forgot to mention, and Roger forgot to mention, is I told Roger he could raise as good alfalfa as what we do. I, I neglected to tell him he could raise better alfalfa than what we are here, and he did. Uh, those fields he's talking about taking five cuttings off, the one, the one field in particular, he had an alfalfa seeding failure the year before. So Roger went in there and, and foliar fed when it broke dormancy in the spring, which we weren't accustomed to doing here because our ground tends to stay a little wet, so we don't like to go on in the spring. We should. We, <clears throat> when we're definitely going to do that when we can. When that alfalfa breaks dormancy, get in there and foil your feet. And Roger had done that, and his alfalfa was about 10 days ahead of ours. So I neglected to tell Roger that he could raise alfalfa better than what we are, and he, he's, do he's doing it. 
Uh, like for Jerry Barso to tell about his experience now with the products on his own farm as well as what he's seeing with fellows that he's custom applying these products for. Thank you, bud. Uh, we just got started here in the foil feeding probably, I think, I believe it was last spring early. And uh, it's, it's, it's really wonderful. You can uh, uh, you go out here with your outfit and uh, you go to the farm and we put in all the micronutrients and everything it needs. And uh, you go out here and uh, uh, you just uh, pull in the field and uh, set your rate for what you want. And when you're done, uh, the fertilizer is where it needs to be. And you know, it's, uh, it's, it usually comes out right to the T. Uh, I never tried it, of course, in foil feeding till last year. And uh, we're, I'm real tickled with it. We've grown pretty nice alfalfa. I've got some old uh, uh, seedings that uh, probably five years old, maybe, but uh, uh, it, it really responds. And, and, and it's going to go another two years, maybe, yet before I'd have to rotate the crop. But uh, it's really, uh, it's really exciting uh, to be with the Conklin uh, Company, and uh, it, it, they just uh, they keep doing things more for the farmers. Uh, uh, they, you know, to keep updating on uh, uh, maybe a different uh, fertilizer or something, and uh, they really do a lot, a lot for the farmer. And I'm, I'm real pleased with that. Uh, I, you know, it's uh, I do uh, foil feed here for Buddy, in which you can see, you know, it's a, an exceptional field. It looks pretty. Uh, there's a lot of alfalfa in here, and uh, this field here, I was around and when he sowed it, and everything. And it's just, it's just, it's just wonderful to see. And uh, it, it, the stuff will work. Uh, we can stay in here all day, and, and uh, but it it, it, it it really works. Uh, they've got the and the more the, the more you foil feed, the better it seems uh, seems to work. Uh, you know, you can come in here on a farm that's never used it before, and well, we really didn't see a result. But if you can get them the second time, the same year, you can really see a world of difference. So I've got uh, some third cutting hay. Of course, it had a lot to do with the mother nature. It's going to be a lot better third cutting, I believe, than it was second cutting. And uh, that's about it, bud, I believe. And, uh, and uh, back to you. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. And uh, Jerry mentioned some things there we sometimes don't think about. And that's ease of application. You know, we don't have to go to we don't have to go to town and pick up the dry fertilizer cart and, and wonder if it's going to be ready when we get there and wonder if it's going to work when we bring it home. Wonder if we're getting a, the right kind of a job spreading that dry fertilizer out here. And, you know, you have some fellows that'll maybe overlap, attempting to get a good job. Well, when you got particle sizes the same size of different weights, it's pretty hard to get an even job. You can't take a ping pong ball and a golf ball and throw them both with the same effort, and they both land in the same place. It won't happen. So, with foliar feeding, you're directing your nutrients directly on the crown of the alfalfa, and this is a supplement to whatever your other fertilizer program may be. We may recommend some dry fertilizer to get your soil in balance. You know, over the years us farmers have been brainwashed into thinking that we have to use optimum tons of materials to get optimum yields. And that's just not necessarily true. In fact, we can get optimum yields with a few gallon of, of the right kind of nutrients per acre. So if you're looking for top forage production, we are, the Conklin is the only company in the United States that has a total program. We are, we are the only fertilizer company in the United States that is owned by farmers. Then those farmers have alfalfa test plots on their farm. So we got the grassroots research here to back these products up and the knowledge to tell farmers how to use these products to get optimum yields. Here is a typical alfalfa plant here out of this cutting. Look at the size of those leaves, and look at your leaves go clear down, almost clear to the root. And, you know, there's 37% protein in the leaves and 9% protein in the stalk. So what do we want? We want more leaves. And this comes with the AgriVantage program. And we'll start to talk about that here in a little bit, why we can raise alfalfa like this. And uh, in the past, I was using as much as 800 pounds of dry fertilizer per acre, attempting to get 8 ton of, fertilizer, or eight ton of alfalfa per acre. We broke the 10 ton per acre using the AgriVantage program. Quit using the salt-based fertilizers. We're getting our soil back in balance now. And our soil is getting in harmony with nature. And that's what this program is all about, is balancing your soil and getting optimum yields with the least amount of input cost. That's so important in today's environment because we might as well face it. Whether it's beef, dairy, 
pork, whatever, commodities, farmers are really never going to get the price we deserve. So we have to look at everything that's available to us to cut our costs and become more efficient. I just wonder how efficient we have to become to continue to be competitive and still protect the environment. And this is something else that we need to be concerned about too. These products will help us to protect the environment instead of putting on hundreds and hundreds of pounds to the acre, which may wash off with some soil and get into the river. We're putting a few gallon per acre and feeding a plant. We talk about feeding a plant instead of feeding the soil. So Roger, I'd like for you to tell about if we was getting ready to seed this field, what would be the products you'd reach for? Well, if we was getting ready to seed this uh, field, bud, the first product I'd reach for is uh, Amplified D. Amplified D is a seed germination aid, and what it has in it is a product called denison monophosphate. Now that's the same product as in the seed. It's a little germ. It gives it energy to get up out of the ground. And when we when we plant our in our area, we plant usually 18 to 20 pounds of seed to the acre. Well, if every seed in alfalfa would come up, six pounds the acre is all you'd really need to get a good stand. Well. Bud said we can cut our rate back by four to six pounds. Well, we cut her back to 14 pounds to the acre. And I was very nervous at that time about doing it. I said, boy, if I do all this work and not get a good stand, Bud, I'm coming after you. <laughs> well, we had a beautiful stand. But it cost me less than three or four dollars an acre to use this product. And I saved six pounds of seed at four dollars a pound. Now, I was the end user, user so we, therefore, I saved about 20 bucks an acre just in seeding my alfalfa. Plus, I, had a, I don't think 40 pounds of seed the acre could have done much better than what we did. Excellent product. But Amplified D, to me, is a must to get started yeah. on that seed. Yes. Thanks, Roger. I sure agree with Roger. Um, what we've found uh, with several farmers in this area is we're able to, to advise them to cut their seeding rate from 18 to 20 pounds an acre down to 12 or 14 and have a beautiful stand. You know, after this stand's two or three years old, uh, we have taken a lot of stand counts and we've still got 19 to 24 crowns per square foot and that's just about all that will survive. It's a matter of survival of the fittest as this stand grows older and that will still give you excellent yields. So right off the bat we're starting to save money using the, the AgriVantage program and then we're, we're on our way to the optimum yields and, and trying to get the yield that these new alfalfa varieties are capable of. Uh, we can't use 19th century technology fertilizer and expect to get 21st century yields. It just can't be done. And Conklin has always been ahead of the game, whichever products or whichever division you might talk about. In the agro agronomics division, uh, there's no secrets. It's not magical. Uh, there's a lot of research data out there from universities for many, many years to back this up. And we're, we're the only company that's putting it all together and offering it to the farmer. I don't care if a farmer's only got two acres of alfalfa or 2,000 acres. Our, alpha, our fertilizer comes in small quantities or by the truckload. So we can handle whatever the farmer needs. So Roger talked about the Amplified D and getting the seed in the ground and getting it started. And then there's, there's other things that can be done depending upon the situation, depending upon the soil test. The farmer may want to use some liquid fertilizer when he plants. Roger, talk about let's talk about the fertilizer and and maybe calcium in that that field of yours that was had a pH of 5.5. It needed calcium. Yes, and, bud. Uh, and uh, when we planted it, we uh, had a cross drill, uh, kind of a no-till drill. Cause we did some no-till and we did some conventional all in the same same day. And uh, well, we started out with about three gallon of our liquid product called uh, 31818. It's a clear liquid, as you can. You can see here, uh, this product won't freeze, it can set all winter and set two or three years, it won't separate. Uh, then that way the plant gets everything it needs right there. Uh, but we was able to put on two or three gallons of this to the acre. And on the one field that had a 5.5 pH, we put a product on called uh, our calcium, another uh, liquid micro. And we put that on to the rate of a roughly uh, a quart to the acre, because we were down uh, on our calcium. And then we also then used another product with that called uh, Excito on the, on the soil Excito. We wanted to get that crop up out of the ground and get it going good and, and we definitely did that. In a few days this crop was up and rolling. Thanks Roger. And Roger also used another product we don't talk a lot about. It's, it's, it's a product that's been around for many many years. It's one of the first products that Conklin came on the market with and it's Wex. 
and Wex has many, many uses, but in, in alfalfa production there, Roger used this on some of these fields that's, that tend to be tight. And this, this tends to condition the soil, and it, is a so, it has soil amendment properties. And so therefore that just helped on those fields that were maybe a little slower, it helped to get them going quicker. So there's, an, there's a product there that could work in your program if needed. Then once we got the alfalfa up then, then we want to foliar feed it, and that's where Jerry comes in. Jerry will probably pick 918.9 or 318.18. Uh, if the alfalfa looks like it needs it, you know, the alfalfa doesn't start to build rhizomes right away. It's capable of furnishing its, own, furnishing its own nitrogen, but it doesn't do it right away. So it might need a kick with a little bit of foliar nitrogen. That's our foliar product, 2600. And he'll probably reach for some zinc. Uh, zinc is a healer. Uh, when this is sprayed on alfalfa, zinc acts on alfalfa like zinc does in our bodies. It's a healer. It's a, it helps the plant to be healthy. They'll so probably reach for zinc. Probably reach for calcium. Alfalfa needs a lot of calcium. So this is a, is a major secondary element. Again, a clear liquid that can be foliar applied that's readily acceptable by the plant. All these products have a pH of 7, so the plant will readily accept the, the product. And the last thing you'll reach for, if everything else is in balance, and this is why we want a soil test, so that everything is in balance, and the last product you reach for then is called Foliar Excito. Excito carries an EPA registration. It's a plant growth regulator. There's dozens of them on the market. Conklin has the only product that carries an EPA registration. In other words, Conklin spent the money and the time and the effort to prove to the EPA this does increase yield. And it certainly does that. If you're looking for a top alfalfa production, there's nothing that can compare with Excito, with this total program. So Jerry, let's talk a little bit about, let's say we've sewed this, sewed this down. It's coming up, it's about an inch, half, two inches tall. What happens then? Well, bud, there's a few things here we forgot to, you forgot to mention there for the uh, uh, foil, uh, foil feeding and uh, that is uh, the boron, uh, which uh, we need to put that on uh, for when the foil feeding for the crown of the uh, alfalfa. It, it definitely needs that. And then, uh, and then we've got a product here, a new product out called Rain Pass. And it, it's a product you put right in there with it. I think I believe it's eight ounces to the hundred. Two hundred gallons. Two hundred yes. gallons. And uh, and that is, uh, and it, it just says it on there, Rain Fast. Uh, when it goes on the uh, on your alfalfa uh, that's where you want it to be and that's where it's going to go with this rain pass it, it really it really does exceptional uh, it uh, helps, I guess, helps to get that fertilizer that, into the crown that's what I'm trying to say yes. but I guess and uh, <laughs> it's just uh, and then another thing I wanted to mention when we could talk about our market nutrients we're not talking about a bunch uh, usually a pint of uh, calcium boron and uh, zinc. I mean, it's not to, to the acre now. That's uh, that's not a whole lot, and of course, not very expensive at all neither. And uh, but I don't know. I missed anything yet? <laughs> no, I think uh, Jerry, you picked up on the things I missed there. Okay, that's very important. Uh, Spaces the rain fast material. Uh, what this does is, like I said, helps to get your your fertilizer into the crown quicker. Uh, if there's a storm coming in. Uh, it'll be rain fast in 30 minutes, so that's very important. So but, uh, one thing we, di we didn't talk about a whole lot here was uh, the cost. Uh, that's always a, a big issue on it. Uh, you know, if you thought and think about it, it, it'll cost you roughly uh, 15 to 20 dollars an acre to do a foliage fit. Well, that sounds like a lot maybe, but if you do that four or five times a year, that also sounds like a lot, even up to 20 dollars an acre. Uh, but if you're getting 10 ton of alfalfa off your ground and if alfalfa is I know it's bringing over a hundred dollars a ton yes. so that's less than ten bucks a ton for your cost now I don't know how where you can buy good alfalfa hay for ten dollars a ton that's right that's that's total needs uh, it can be as high as thirty thirty dollars per acre but uh, we're looking at you know six to ten tons the acre where before with the dry program uh, we was having a hard time getting six. It's not hard at all to get six tons of the acre. You know, we'll do that in two cuttings. So we're maximizing the, the acreage that we have. 
and that's going to be so important in the future too as as the urban sprawl keeps coming in on us will us fellows that rent farms will be renting less farms because now they're they're growing houses so we have to make our acres worth more and that's what this program's all about so now we've got the crop planted we full your fedding and it's on its way so then the next step is to cut it and this can happen in a seeding year about six weeks after you've seeded we cut it and then we preserve that the protein that, we, that we've raised there's no need to raise leaves like this in protein if we don't preserve it McConkin has a product called feed store we, our old, older product is called ProServe ProServe can be used when you mow if you're going to uh, bale your hay and want it to get really dry quick then you want to use ProServe and a new technology wet wetting agent called RainFast that will help to break the wax on the on the stems help your hay to dry quicker so then if you want to bale you'd want to use the ProServe and the RainFast when you mow now in our situation where it's all going in the silos we don't really need for it to dry that quickly so we don't use ProServe when we mow but we do use feed store at the blower to preserve the retain the nutrients that we've that we've grown and then we take it a step further in our dairy herd then and hundreds of dairymen across the country are doing this they're taking it a step further and releasing that protein in the cow's rumen with a product that we have called fast track which is really I like to feel it's, it's in our animal products division but it's really part of our forage division too because it it helps that animal to release the proteins that's bound up in the forages and we can talk about that on maybe another video at another time so we've taken our first cutting off and then we have Jerry come right back in about seven days after you've cut we have found seems to work best and there you'll see some shoots coming back up and you know when we when we cut alfalfa and run over it with this big equipment, we're really doing our best to kill it, aren't we? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do, seems like. Yeah, we're, we, you know, we're mashing it down. And if you stop and think about it, if you're going out through there at the mower, and you've got a certain set of tracks, field starts at the same place each time. It starts at the edge, and you work across. And when you rake, what do you do? Your tracks are the same place as the mower tracks. Even if you're putting a couple windrows together, guess where your chopper ends up? Right in the same tracks. So when you see your alfalfa stand start to come back, you'll see maybe shoots inch, inch and a half tall between the tracks. Now where the tracks are, they'll be kind of bare. And you think, boy. And it took me, it took this hard-headed German a long time to realize that you don't need foliage there to feed alfalfa. Now we're, we're, if we feed in soybeans, it'd be a different story. But for alfalfa, you want to feed that crown. And it's like a transfusion. You're giving that plant instant energy. So where those tracks are, you know, we like I said, we're trying to kill it. So then with the with the liquid fertilizer, the clear liquid fertilizer, it has a neutral pH and all so does our micronutrients. And our micronutrients are all they're all chelated except calcium. Calcium cannot or except boron. Boron cannot be chelated, but the products that we have that are chelated are chelated with a product called EDTA, and that encapsulates the micronutrient so that it's available only to the plant. If it hits the soil, it's not available to the soil, it's available to the plant. That's why we can get by with a half a pint or a pint of a micronutrient. So we use zinc, because again, as I mentioned before, zinc is a healer, so we want to heal that crown. We want to get we want to get it on the on the way to making another crop like this. So that is the key to top forage production is for your feeding. So then we go on to the rate to make our subsequent, uh, subsequent cuttings and basically done the same way when you take your last cutting off for the year. Do not use Excito because then we're wanting to build root reserves. We're not looking for top growth. So do not use Excito on the last cutting of the season and you're sort of when you pull your feet the last time you're kind of putting it to bed for winter wouldn't hurt to bump that calcium up a little bit wouldn't hurt to bump the boron up a little bit look at your soil test and see what your soil levels are and then you'll know and ask your field manager your conca manager to, to look at your soil tests with you because those fellows are trained they've been to ag training and they they can advise you what's best for your field your particular field and no matter how many fields you have for your farm.
Well, Bud, I sure appreciate today coming up here and uh, sharing your alfalfa with a lot of the guys that don't have the opportunity to come all the way up here to, to see it. But I tell you, it sure is phenomenal to look at alfalfa and, uh, and the forage that you're growing here for your cattle. If them cows don't like don't like this, well then I really feel sorry for them. <laughs> but uh, I'm really impressed with the, the amount of alfalfa we got here and the quality of alfalfa we've got for, for your livestock. And uh, livestock producers all across the country, well, I don't care whether it's dairy cattle or, or beef cattle, they deserve a, a good meal. And, and this is one way to do it, very economical. Thank you again today, Bud, for having me up and sharing this with us. You're quite welcome, Roger. Well, same way as me, Bud. I appreciate it. Uh, it's nice, nice to come out and see after we spoil fed it and, uh, and see what it, how, how it has responded. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, uh, exceptional. Uh, it is it's really nice. And uh, I just, I guess I can't say enough about it, but uh, it is a, it's a good way to grow alfalfa. And uh, we can do uh, so much uh, with it when we've got a foil feed. We've, uh, like you said, we talked about some micronutrients and a soil test is a, is a must and uh, Midwest Labs do that for us and uh, uh, it's just, uh, I, I don't know what else to say, but uh, we're putting gallons to the acre of maybe five gallons to the acre. Now that's, uh, uh, that's a real, real something, I mean, uh, instead of hundreds of pounds, it's, it's five gallons. And, uh, and it, it will work. I mean, you can see it. Uh, this is some awful nice dirt cutting. Spacey uh, being a new seeding this spring. I think it's, a, it's, real, it's real nice. And uh, everywhere I go now, it's just not here on the Mars farm. Uh, I do a lot for uh, Rittenberger's farm here in Zanesville. And, uh, and he can grow the, the same alfalfa. He's uh, new seedings and old seedings. And it, it, it's, it's really something to see. Uh, we did four different do different jobs uh, different times and you can come back in two or three weeks and see what you sprayed it before and it, it's it's really something and uh, there you go again bud it's uh, it's a way to do it uh, it's, uh, you're putting what you need in the plant to, 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 to get it to grow bud I thank you again thank you Jerry and thank you Roger you know uh, fellas there's one thing one very important thing we forgot and maybe that's because it's so new Conklin has a new product this year called Sidekick and we are seeing excellent results with that product. In fact, this uh, this alfalfa here was foliar fed with four gallon of 31818, the micronutrients, and also two quarts of, of Sidekick. Sidekick is 25% potassium, 17% sulfur. Of all the soil tests from across the country that go into Midwest laboratories in Omaha, Nebraska, 80% of those soil tests are deficient in sulfur. And prior to our product, uh, I don't have knowledge of any material that was convenient to use. Sure, there's dry sulfur. Uh, you can throw it out there, and about 2% of it's available the year you put it on, and then 2 or 3% each year after that. So it's an element of sulfur, and you don't get the results like you can get if you can feed the sulfur to the, to the plant. And we feel that that has a lot to do with the quality of this, of this hay. Uh, the leaves, you can see, the leaves go clear to the ground, and that, that's because this, this soil is, is starting to get in balance. And we'll look at the soil test off this field here in a little bit. And um, I think um, there's something I want to point out there when we do look at that soil test. So, fellas, um, Roger, do you have anything else you want to add? No, not at this moment, but thank you. Jerry? No, I don't believe so, bud. I think you pretty much got it covered I believe. Okay, well I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. Uh, we are farmers trying to help farmers. We know we have a total program. We are the only company, Conklin is the only company in the United States that has a total program for forage production and we're here to tell you about it. I think you'll see some things here that, uh, that will interest you. If you're interested in raising alfalfa, you're welcome to come and look at our alfalfa. If you can't see a difference in what we're doing then chances are you're not looking close enough because the, the, the difference is very obvious. Thank you. Here at the house there's some things that we forgot to mention over in the field uh, about foyer feeding. There's several things that's very important that needs to be done when you're foyer feeding alfalfa. If these three things can't be done then you probably better not pull your feet alfalfa. Jerry, what are those? Okay, but the most important is uh, 
because the temperature of the day, you want it to drop at least 10 degrees or try to have it around 70 degrees uh, if, if possible. And uh, 60 pound pressure uh, with your tips on and your tips pointing straight back, not down, but straight back. But that's the way we, uh, we try to, to we, that's the way we do do it, uh, a floral feeding or uh, 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 alfalfa. <laughs> All right. All right, bud. Yes, sir, Jerry. And a lot of people say, well, how come you want your tips headed back? And why do you want 60 pound pressure? When that fertilizer comes out of your tips, it'll come out and, and we use a hollow cone tip. We want it to swirl and then just come down like a blanket on the crop. We don't want to force it on the crop. We want, we want to just lay it down like a blanket so the crop can accept it. Okay, a lot of folks ask, well, can we full your feed in the morning? We really don't want to stay up till 8.30, 9 o'clock at night and be out there full your feeding alfalfa. No, well, it can be done in the morning. We don't recommend it. You probably won't see results. Uh, timing of the day, time of the day is very important. It needs to be done in the evening because then your, when the barometric pressure goes down, your temperature drops, that the plant cells open up. They're ready, they're ready to accept something. They're either going to accept fertilizer or they're going to accept the dew. So if you try to pull your feed in the morning, that plant's already taken in all the moisture you can take in overnight with the dew. So you want to pull your, want your fertilizer in there first. And that's another reason to use the rain fast. So we completely flood that plant with nutrients before the dew sets on. That's so important. Okay, here in the field we talked about the uh, Midwest Laboratories and their recommendations. So we have here uh, the soil test that was taken this year for that field before it was planted. As you can see, it's an AgriVantage recommendation uh, from Midwest Laboratories, an independent laboratory. So we start here with our, our phosphorus, P1 is 54, P2 is 74, uh, potassium is 221, magnesium is 271, sulfur is 12, sulfur is low. We'd like to see sulfur at, uh, with our magnesium and um, Potassium, phosphorus, where they're at, we'd like to see sulfur at about 30. So that's why we're looking at this new product, Sidekick, for this field. Zinc is 4, that is good. Manganese is good. Iron's always high in, in Ohio soils. Copper is 1, that's about where we want it. Boron is 0.6, we're a little low. Actually, copper is just a little low, we'd like to see it probably 1.5. So you can just go right down the list here and, and see exactly what that field needs. And then we write a prescription for that field so that you can get the full potential out of that field and the full genetic potential of whatever hybrid alfalfa you may be planting. Okay, uh, fellas, you know we've heard for years that a pound and a pound, a pound is a pound the world around. When it comes to fertilizer, that's not necessarily true. As we're trying to show you here today, there is a difference in fertilizers. There's a lot of liquid fertilizers out there. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so good, some of them are superior. We have one of the, one of the superior products on the market today. So when you pull your feed your alfalfa, and maybe some of you fellows have tried to pull your feed before and said, gosh, I didn't see results. Well, that's probably because you didn't have a total program. That's what we're here to offer you is a total program. So Roger, um, in the past you used to use the dry product, and then you started using the clear. Let's, um, what would you have to say here to wrap up this film? Well, the biggest thing I can see is, like you say, when you're, you're talking about a dry fertilizer, uh, it's not all equal. And uh, when you spread it out there on the ground, you may get some here and some there. You may not get it uniform. But the liquid product and the superior product that Conklin has in our feast fertilizer, each plant, each stalk gets what it needs. And that is critical. If you're feeding each plant different, you're going to get different results. But if you want a uniform result, then use clearly the leader. Conklin is by far, I always said it's been about 10 years ahead of the competition. This is 21st century technology. And fellas, if we're going to stay in the business today and raising good forages, we have to use a product that will get the job done. This one was good at one time, but times have changed. I mean, you guys aren't all farmed today with the old B. John Deere or the <laughs> M. Farm all tractors. you got the newer models, and that's what this is, the new model. Thanks for doing. There's another thing that we want to talk about too, and then we'll wrap this film up. Um, fellas, if, you're, if the pH of your soil is um, anywhere from 4 
to 5.5, would you really think twice about maybe where you're going to put that field in alfalfa or not? I, I believe you would. You know what the pH of this is? Anywhere from 4 to 5.5. You really think you can do the proper job feeding your crop with a product that the pH is 4 to 5.5? Thank you.